Hello and welcome back again. My name is Chris Parker with ParkerPhotographic.com and this is chapter 9 of 12 for my free Luminar Neo course. In this Luminar Neo tutorial, you're going to learn some pro tips and tricks for editing your portraits with the Portrait AI photo editing tools. If you're ready, let's do it. So when it comes to portrait photography, one of the best things you can do to improve a photo is to increase the bokeh of an image, which simply means making the background blurrier than the subject, which will give separation between the subject and the background. Now, that is something that you typically do in camera by selecting a very large aperture like f2.8, f1.8, or even f4. You can also do it with a longer lens and that is something that will separate the background from the subject, making them stand out. Now, we can recreate this in Luminar Neo with Portrait Bokeh AI to help increase the amount of bokeh. So with that large aperture, if we take a look, our subject is in focus, but the background gradually goes from in focus right here to not in focus in the background. And you can see there's a gradual transition from blurry to very blurry. So the further the objects in the background, the more bokeh they will receive. And we can simulate the bokeh in Luminar Neo with Portrait Bokeh AI to further blur out that background even more, which will help separate the subject from the background, making them the star of the show. So to do that, we're going to increase the amount here. And depending on the size of the file, it could take a few seconds for that new bokeh to appear. Now, we can see that it's much blurrier than it was before. So there's a shallower depth of field, which was simulated with Portrait Bokeh AI. But we need to refine it a little bit more because there's some elements in the image that are receiving this effect that shouldn't. For example, if we take a look down here, the bench area and under her feet are getting that effect as well. Plus, once you hover over the image, you're going to see the mask that Luminar Neo automatically created for you based on the technology built into Portrait Bokeh AI. And what we need to do now is we need to adjust the effect so it's being applied in the proper places because we don't want it on the bench. Plus, if we scroll in here, so to zoom in, I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse button. And then when I press my space bar, I can navigate to another part of the image and you can see how it didn't select her fingers. So now we can select focus and defocus to add or remove from the mask. So I want to add to her fingers here or add the mask to her fingers. So we can adjust the size of the brush from this slider here. Or if you use your right bracket key, that will make it larger. Left bracket key will make it smaller. The softness is in relation to the feathering of the edge of the brush. So right now there are two circles, an inner and an outer. So if we adjust the softness to zero, we only have one circle. So now we have a hard edge. There's no feathering along that edge. Now 100 for me, I find to be too soft. So I like to set it in between 30 to 40, maybe 50 at the most. That way I don't have a hard edge and I still have a little bit of a soft edge as well, which creates a nice transition between the mask and the area not masked. Now I can kind of see that there's a little bit of the mask on the outside right here. Now I'm actually adding to it. So I'm going to undo that with Commander Control plus the letter Z. So if I want to remove from the mask, I'm going to select D focus and then I can remove from the mask. So it's kind of hard to see because it's really light right there. So if I just paint in here, you'll see that I removed from the mask once it updates. Okay, Command or Control plus Z to undo it go back to focus to add to the mask. So now the fingers are part of the mask. Now the other slider that we have here is strength and kind of think of this like an opacity slider. So 100 is 100% 100 opacity or 100% 100 
of the mask being applied or removed. If I drop this down to 12 and I want to add in an area, you can see how that mask is not as strong. So the strength of it is not as strong. So there's 52. And then if I paint over it again, it's going to continue adding to it until 100% of that mask is applied. So if I go back to 83, you can see how it's much darker than it was with 12 or 13 in this case. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. I'm gonna put this back to 100. Don't need that as part of it. Now we do have a little bit of a problem here because we still have the bench here is being blurred out or the bokeh effect is being applied to the bench and it shouldn't because it's on the same plane as our subject. So we need to remove that and we can do that with one of these sliders down here. Let's first take a look at our brightness slider which will allow you to brighten the background or make it darker. And by making it darker, that helps the subject stand out even more versus just the bokeh effect. Highlights glow will add a glow to the highlights. Warmth will allow you to change the color of that light in the background, whether it's cooler or warmer, that's entirely up to you. And then depth correction is going to adjust the starting point of that bokeh effect. So if we adjust it to the left, that's going to increase the range of the bokeh. So the closer the subject is to the camera, the more of it that it's going to be blurred out. If we adjust it to the right, it's going to push that bokeh effect further away from the camera. So behind the subject, or at least now it's behind the subject at 76. So this area, is not getting that bokeh effect, but it gradually increases the blurriness of the background the further back it goes. So you can control to the left, closer to the camera, further from the camera. So for this particular image, I don't want that bench included, but I do want it to start in this area here. So it's just a matter of finding which setting will give that to us. And I think right around 20 does a pretty good job. So now these flowers and this bench and our subject are in focus, and it gradually decreases that focus the further back it goes. All right, so the last tool to tweak your mask is edges correction, which is going to contract or expand the edge of the mask, which is helpful for fine details like hair. All right, so another portrait editing tool you'll find yourself using a lot is Face AI, which has face recognition technology built in that will help you target different parts of the face, like the eyes, the mouth, the teeth, and more to help you enhance and retouch the face. So let's go ahead and check out the Face AI technology and see how you can use it to improve your portrait. So the first option here is Face Light, which is pretty self-explanatory. As you adjust it, it will change the light or shape the light around your subject to make it brighter or even brighter, depending on how far you go. So you can control the amount of light on the face in case you didn't get enough at the time of capture. And this is really helpful more so when you're shooting in natural light outdoors and the sun is either to the side or behind the subject and you don't have extra light being placed on them with let's say a strobe or a reflector. You can use face light here to light up just the face, which is awesome. Next, we have slim face, which will make the face skinnier. And I'm not quite sure this is something that I would use unless I'm shooting with a wide angle lens, which is going to make the face a little bit wider due to the angle of that lens. Now, I wouldn't recommend using wide angle lenses for portraits. 50 millimeters or equivalent is better because that is considered a normal lens based on what you see. So it's going to make the face look much more natural versus a wide angle. But if you are shooting with a wide angle, sometimes you can't avoid that, especially if you have a large group or if you're a wedding photographer and you have a situation where you're shooting with a wide angle and then you get in real close to shoot a portrait of somebody, that face is going to be a little wider. So you may want to use slim face to kind of reshape the face accordingly. 
All right, next we have eyes. So that face recognition technology that I mentioned is going to target different parts of the face. So we have the iris visibility, iris flare, enlarge eyes, eye whitening, enhancer, red eye removal, dark circle removal, improve eyebrows. So let's go over a couple of these and I'll give you some tips along the way. So iris flare is going to add a little bit of a light underneath the iris. So kind of like if you put a reflector under somebody's chin, this will kind of recreate that effect. So you can kind of see it the higher I go here, it makes it a little bit more apparent that it's much brighter than it was down here at five or zero. If somebody's eyes are squinting, you can try and enlarge the eyes a little bit. Other than that, I really don't find enlarge eyes very useful. It kind of has a cartoon effect to it. So if that's something that you want to do, you can do that. Eye whitening. So we have the whites of the eyes here. You can whiten those up a little bit. Now, I wouldn't go too far because then it's going to look fake. She's starting to have that little alien type of look going on right there. So I would keep the eye whitening pretty low between five and 10 is what I usually find helpful. Enhancer is going to sharpen the eye to enhance it a little bit to make those eyes pop and stand out a little bit more. Red eye removal occurs when you have direct flash that you're using to light somebody and the pupil will turn red because of the light flashing or the light bouncing around inside creates that red color. You can remove it with red eye removal. Dark circle removal. So any circles or dark areas or shadows underneath the eyes here can be minimized with dark circles removal. And then you can improve the eyebrows with this slider here, which is going to darken them and sharpen them up just a little bit. I think it does more darkening than anything else. So it just makes those eyebrows stand out a little bit more. Next, we have the mouth, which is also going to be targeted with that face recognition technology. So you can increase the saturation of the lips, increase the redness, you can make them a little darker. And then if they have teeth, you can whiten those teeth very easily with this slider here. All right, let's actually scroll up because there's one more thing I need to show you and that is under this menu right here. So if you click on this, you're gonna see a menu of colors. So this will allow you to easily change the color of the eyes. How awesome is that? I love it. So if you have a portrait of yourself and you always wanted blue eyes or green eyes, you can change the color of your eyes. Iris visibility will increase or decrease the intensity of that color for you. There's also a couple of cool ones in here like owl, if you want owl eyes, you can do something a little bit different with that. Kind of freak out all your friends with that one. And there's some other colors in here as well. Maybe cat eyes instead of owl eyes and you can increase the visibility of that so it doesn't show your eyes underneath it as much. All right, I'm gonna put that back to the original because that's a little freaky. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. And the next editing tool is Skin AI. So this is the one that you will use to begin retouching the skin. And sometimes it works really well, sometimes not at all. So I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how to overcome that. So amount will begin smoothing out the skin and minimizing the blemishes. I wouldn't go to 100. I wouldn't even go 75 for me, 40 to 50, or even 25 to 50. Too much is going to make the image look fake. The skin can look like a mannequin, like it's plastic and not real skin. So I like to keep it as natural as possible, but at the same time, trying to improve that skin as much as possible. Okay, shine removal, pretty self-explanatory. Any shine, like on the forehead, the nose or the cheeks or anywhere else can be minimized or even removed completely. Now this one I don't mind increasing more so than the amount because it's going to do a really good job in removing that shine. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more here so we can take a look at some of these blemishes. There's one right here, there's another one on her nose and in other places on her face. So skin defects removal AI. So the implication is once you click on this and turn it on, it's going to auto magically 
find the blemishes and remove them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. For this particular image, it doesn't work so much. We can still see those blemishes are still visible. In that case, what you can do is head back up to the Essentials section, click on Erase, and begin erasing. I'm just gonna click and drag, or just click once to apply that effect to those areas. And then once you click Erase, it's going to auto magically remove those blemishes with this tool, which I think does a better job versus the other tool. So just keep that in mind. If it's not working out as expected, come into Erase and do it from here. All right, so Body AI is going to allow you to reshape a subject's body and abdomen. So you can come into the shape slider here and begin adjusting the shape of your subject. And it's gonna take the outsides of the subject and pull or pinch them inwards. And if you notice the background, as I'm making my adjustment, it's altering that background as well. So keep that in mind if there's something important in the background that shouldn't be getting affected by this tool, you'll want to mask out your subject first. So I'm gonna go ahead and select masking, mask AI, and then I'm going to let Luminar do its magic by analyzing the image, and then it should create a mask for just our subject. I'm gonna go ahead and click on human, and then we can resize the shape of the body only, and it doesn't affect the background. Now, if we zoom in, there's some artifacts that are left behind. You can see the outline of where the shape of that body was originally on both sides here. So you wanna go in and use your erase tool to remove that. Now we can also use the abdomen to have that kind of pinch and pull it in and make that smaller as well. All right, so high key is going to emulate the photography technique known as high key, which simply means we overexpose an image to create that high key effect. And you can affect how much or how little of that high key effect is applied with all these different settings here. And it all starts with amount. So as you increase that, you'll notice that the overall image gets brighter, the skin tones are kind of washed out now, and the color tones are also muted as well. Standard high key, will further enhance that effect if you slide it to the right and it's going to affect the entire image or you can pull it back a little bit if needed. Dynamic high key is also going to enhance the effect but it's not going to affect the highlights or the skin as much as the standard high key which is a global edit for the entire image. This one is more targeted to the darker areas of your image and then the blacks will allow you to increase or decrease the blacks and the shadows based on the effect that you want to achieve. Glow is going to, well, add a glow, but it's going to apply it more towards the highlights of the image versus the shadows and the blacks. Contrast affects the overall contrast in an image. So if you want less or more contrast, you can use the contrast slider, and then saturation, of course, will increase or decrease the purity of your colors. All right, to continue elevating your Luminar Neo editing skills, check out this professional editing tutorial next, which will show you some advanced editing techniques.